Hi, it's Richard here from Intelligent Advisor IT Consulting with another in our long-running series about the example projects that are provided with Oracle Policy Modeling to help you learn Oracle Intelligent Advisor. Today's project is called Student Benefits. And as I'm sure you know by now, to get to the example projects, you go to the project tab and you click example projects. And in this case, we're going to look at student benefits. So as you can probably see, it's designed to demonstrate um, a fairly typical education or a benefit scenario where depending on your financial means and depending on your resident status, you may or may not be eligible for benefits to help you continue your studies. That in itself is a very uh, easy to understand context. The project is showcasing probably I'd say one core feature of Oracle Intelligent Advisor, which is the connectivity with Oracle B2C service, or what used to be called right now. And that is one of the driving elements of this project. The example project therefore works best if you do have an instance of Oracle B2C service to be able to test it out, but you can still run it in the debugger and you can still uh, simulate uh, having it work properly. So it's not like it's going to be useless if you don't have Oracle B2C service. Um, aside from the integration with uh, B2C service, we have a focus on an interview with some fairly standard functionality such as screen visibility, dynamic label visibility, and adjusting the interview to focus on a custom goal. So let's uh, take a brief look at this project and what we can learn from it. First of all, uh, in terms of rules, as you can see, there are essentially some eligibility rules to decide whether you're eligible for benefit or not. And we have some visibility rules and some interpretive rules which help us basically handle the display and finally the create incident rules. So you can see what the goal maybe is here that if uh, a student makes contact with us uh, if they are eligible we're going to open uh, an incident sometimes called a service request or a ticket for them in order to progress their request. So the interview itself is almost like a pre-eligibility test so that we can then take up your requirement. So you can see that in the context of that incident, we're going to create a new record in Oracle B2C service, and we're going to populate the subject, we're going to populate the thread type, and we're going to populate a thread. So even if those don't make too much sense to you, you can probably understand that if we open a new ticket, we have to create a new ticket subject. As far as the eligibility rules themselves are concerned, they make use of some pretty standard Oracle Intelligent Advisor rules. And we'll take a look at some examples right now. So you can see that they have simple Boolean rules, which use a stack of other Booleans concatenated together with AND. We have a very nice little word table here to calculate the income threshold for the family size. So if you're a family of three people, this is the income threshold uh, above which we consider you're no longer eligible and things like that. And the student satisfies the education criteria if either this and this or and, and any of this. So we're using uh, we're using either and and any so some good examples of conjunctions and uh, aggregations. So the either, you can either be enrolled as a regular student or you can be accepted in an eligible degree or certification program and the student has maintained satisfactory academic progress and any of the following, meaning, so in a sense, this is an or and an and and an or. But we write them in this way to make it clear that we have a kind of nesting feature that makes it feel a little bit more like parentheses while at the same time guaranteeing that it's easy to read. Then we look at the immigration status because that is the second branch of criteria. You have education criteria and immigration criteria. And finally, we have certain situations where you're not uh, a citizen of the country, but you're still eligible. And in this case, you can see that we have one, two, three, four levels. So it's just showcasing the fact that Oracle Intelligent Advisor rules can use this notion of um, indented, indenting paragraphs to add structure. So both this and any of this, which in or which includes any of these or both of these or this 
or all of these, you can probably guess where this is going. It's just a, it's a good showcase for how we write complex rules in Oracle Intelligent Advisor without having to resort to mathematical parentheses and things that really wouldn't be very useful or very easy to understand for non-technical people. So what else do we have aside from that? Well, as I said at the beginning, the biggest learning point is the fact that this is designed to integrate with Oracle B2C service. So on the data tab, we'll notice that the entities have been aligned with the objects in B2C service. So you can see that global covers both the contact and the incident, and the thread covers another entity, another object in service cloud called the thread if you can think of it like a conversation thread or a thread of uh, communication with someone and you can see that certain uh, certain attributes such as the student name is mapped in using and these are the fields from the oracle b2c service and certain fields on the other hand such as the subject of the incident are mapped out and it is entirely possible, in case you're going to ask me, it's entirely possible, but just not in this particular scenario, to have both mapped in and mapped out so that you can read something in from Service Cloud, you can edit it in the Oracle Intelligent Advisor interview, and then you can push back the update to uh, Oracle B2C service. So if you've never come across a uh, mapped project before, this can be an interesting concept. If you go to the mapping settings button here, um, you will notice that it is connected to a connection called right now, which of course you probably don't have in your Oracle B to, in your Oracle Intelligent Advisor hub, but you can still look at this screen and you can still get uh, learning knowledge from it. Uh, if you try and deploy it as it is, if you have another Oracle B2C service connection, perhaps yours is called XYZ or right now too, uh, it will offer you the chance to switch over to that connection if it detects a, a compatible connection on your hub. You can see that this is designed for either customer portal users or contact center agents, so basically internal or external users. Anonymous users are not accepted, so we wouldn't be able to run this as an interview normally. Uh, it, just in a web browser, we'd see a message telling us that we should be logged in to either the customer contact center uh, port, uh, logged in either to the agent desktop or to the customer portal. You can see that this is going to load the contact and create a new incident at the end of the interview. So the incident will be created in B2C. I'll come out of there. And the interview itself is fairly straightforward. The one thing to look out for is clearly this message here that says hi student name, uh, that will only display if the student name has been read from Oracle B2C service. So if it is not available, uh, there's a Boolean rule basically to hide it. So if you run it in the debugger, you would not have a student name because the student name hasn't been loaded from B2C and so on, so on, so on. So if I run the debugger, I'm still perfectly in, in a position to test the uh, project and make changes to it. You could adjust some of those um, residence criteria. You could add a new um, eligibility criteria, but you'll notice that the um, when I walk through it, I'm going to enter details about myself, uh, which may, for example, the case of the name, may indeed be something that was read from Oracle B2C service. So if I go and look, for example, at the student details, the basic information page, clicks the information called the student, right click and choose edit, attribute, you will see that indeed this information would normally be read in from B2C service. So in the debugger, that's why it's blank, uh, because obviously the debugger doesn't connect to B2C service, and so on and so forth as you're working through the interview. So the real benefit, I suppose, is if you are able to deploy it to your own hub uh, with a deployment name. Uh, that, of course, then means that you can take the time to go into your Oracle B2C service, um, understand what it means to create an incident, uh, but also understand what it means to create or modify a workspace. And a workspace is where you are going to, for example, add a new tab to your workspace with a nice little uh, tab label. And in the tab label, you're going to add a control of type Intelligent Advisor, a control of type Intelligent Advisor. And when you've added the control, you're going to make sure that you specify the correct deployment name of your policy model, in which was the one I just showed you in the, pre in the previous uh, screen cap when I was just about to deploy it. 
And if your uh, portal is in multiple languages, make sure you set the default locale so that when you then save this workspace and assign it to at least one profile, it means that when, for example, I go and search for a contact and I find a contact like Brian Napier, let's pretend that Brian Napier is one of my future students and I open up Brian, Brian Napier's details, I will see the extra tab that I added. Well, let's just make a little more space here. Let's minimize the ribbon so there's a little more space to view this. And when I select contact example, we should see the student benefits interview has been launched and we can see that the data has been loaded. So it now says, hi, Brian, because that's the name of the person. And if I go to the next page, you'll see that Brian has been loaded in as the name of the person. I'm going to go ahead and fill this out and say, yes, I'm a citizen. Yes, I have a social security number. I'm currently enrolled. Uh, how many people are in my family? Three people. And we'll say that I have $15,000, fairly low resources. Have I maintained satisfactory academic progress? Yes, I have. Do I have a high school diploma? I'm just going to go ahead and say, uh, yes, I have a general educational certificate. And we'll go to next. A couple of final checks. I'm not in default on a federal student lo loan, and I will use this money for educational purposes only. And it says, here are the different kinds of help we can offer you. Looks good to me. So I can go ahead now and say, save my details. Thanks, Brian. Your details have been saved. The incident ID is 66566, and the reference number is 221012. So I'm just going to um, copy those into a brand new. So now I can go to my incident. Sorry, I can now can go to my incidents. And if I refresh this list, We'll notice that the very latest incident that was created in the application is one which has a subject of the student is eligible for student aid. And if I open it up, this won't come as a great surprise to you, I'm sure, given the demonstration, that this is indeed an incident created by the Oracle policy automation, by the Oracle policy. This is indeed an incident created by Oracle Intelligent Advisor. Of course, there's not much information in it at the moment. Um, however, if I wish to, I could then go back to my Oracle Intelligent Advisor project and perhaps consider uh, to create further record, further attributes and map them out to further elements of the incident, such as the incident, let's say the incident uh, status. Let's do status. And like most things in Oracle B2C service, status is in fact a list of values. And we'll say that this is mapped out to status. So that the next time I build that I deploy this interview or the next step would be to then decide how I'm going to set the incident. So we can see, for example, here that the, the status available is unresolved, updated, waiting. So you know what? I'm just going to say that currently I'm just going to say that currently the incident status equals waiting. So for now, I'll hard code it and say that the incident status is waiting. So now that I've set up the incident status, albeit with a hard coded value, I can now go ahead and deploy a snapshot and I'll return to B2C service. And just for the sake of it, for the purpose of a demonstration, I'll return to Brian. I'll return to my contacts. I'll open up Brian Napier again. I'll go to the Oracle Intelligent Advisor interview. I'll walk through the steps nice and quickly this time, since we know what we're doing now. Three people in the family, $15,000. Yes, maintain satisfactory. Yes, I have a diploma. Yes, I have this. Yes, I have. Yes, I am. Uh, I'm not in default on a federal loan. I will use it for educational purposes only. Yep, all looking good. Save my details. And I have my new incident that's been created. So if I go to the incidents for Brian, 
we can see the latest one is number 50 and we'll open it up and we'll see that the status is currently waiting. So the, the main learning points, I guess, of this project are how to work between Oracle Intelligent Advisor and Oracle B2C Service. Of course, this is you know just a quick demo. I've skipped over some of the steps uh, that will be required if you are going to use your own uh, B2C service connection rather than the, the hard code, the one that's in the demo. But um, it's really very straightforward. And if you're interested, you can read a little more about it in the article that accompanies this video. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed our walkthrough of student benefits and what you can learn from it. I'll see you again soon for the next one.